Hello viewers, uh, welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So today we are going to discuss a very important concept that is uh, pseudo inverse that how we can define the inverse of a matrix which is in the maybe n cross n matrix but its rank is less than n or we have a rectangular matrix. So let us discuss uh, that one. So today we are going to discuss the pseudo inverse and this is also called moray penrose inverse. So in this case what we are going to discuss is that suppose I have a matrix A that is of order m cross n and this matrix I know that this represent the linear transformation from Rn to Rm. Now, I will define the three different cases. So, suppose that case 1, suppose we have m is equal to n. So, in that case we have a square matrix. So, that will be A will be n cross n and let rank of A is n. So, in that case we know that the A inverse exists and if I take A inverse A that will be equal to i and this is also equal to A A inverse. So, in this case we are putting the inverse on the left hand side of A. So, this is called the left inner left inverse and this is my right inverse and in this case when the we are, we are able to take the inverse the classical inverse or the whatever the inverse we have defined. So, in this case my left inverse is also equal to right inverse. So, these things we have already seen that whenever the matrix is a non singular matrix then we can define the, the left inverse and the right inverse and then we can define like this one. So, this is the case we have already discussed. So, I will take the case 2. Now, we have a matrix same suppose I have m is equal to n again the square matrix square matrix then suppose rank of A is k less than n. So, in that the matrix will be so, the matrix A is a singular matrix. So, in that case how we can define the inverse? We can define inverse. So, in this case definitely we can not define the regular inverse as we have discussed here but we have to define the inverse of this type of matrix. Maybe I, I can take the case 3. I have a matrix A m cross n and let I just take m is less than n. It means the number of equations are less than number of variables. So, in this case whenever we have a system of equation like A x is equal to B then if system is consistent then always. So, if the system is consistent then infinite many solution exist then infinite 
infinite many solution I just because in this case we have number of equation is less than the number of variables and so in this case also how to define inverse that is also one of the question. Similarly, I can take the case 4 when I have a matrix m cross n matrix and my m is greater than n. So, in that case the number of equation is greater than the number of variables and in this case also the system if system is consistent then the system. So, the same system I am uh, talking about this A x is equal to B. So, if the system is consistent then it may have. So, in that case I can say, so this system has I can make a condition here. So, in this case m is greater than n. Now, what will happen if I take the rank of matrix A is, so number of equation is greater than the number of variable. So, what, do, what would happen if it has a full rank? It means the column are linearly independent. So, if the columns are linearly independent, then in that in this form, then we are going to have unique solution. And when the rank of A is less than n, the number of variables and the system is consistent, then we is going to have a infinite many solution. So, in this case also how to define inverse. So, all these systems we will discuss here that how we can define the inverse. So, now definitely for such type of systems we are unable to define the regular inverse. So, this is type of inverse is called the regular inverse. So, let us uh, define the another term that is we call it pseudo inverse. So, in the pseudo inverse let us take the all the cases. So, I will take the case 1. Suppose I have a matrix A that is of order m cross n and in this case suppose and A has all columns linearly independent. It means that it has full rank in terms of the number of variables. That implies that the rank of the matrix A is n that is number of variables. So, now in this case, so suppose I have a system A x is equal to B then I know that I can pre multiply by the transform A transpose A x is equal to A transpose B and from here I can write now because this matrix is a full rank matrix it has all its columns are linearly independent. So, I know that the A transpose A is invertible and from here I can define my x is equal to A transpose A inverse A transpose B. So, these things we have already seen in the terms of least square. Now, so from here I define, so this term I will define as, now let us see the what will go, what is going to happen. So, if I take A, A transpose A inverse 
A transpose and I multiply this to A, then in this case if you see I will get identity matrix. So, from here I can say that this A transpose A inverse A transpose, so this is A transpose is I can call this left inverse or I can represent by A inverse left. So, this is my left inverse because I am multiplying on the left of the matrix A and I am going getting the identity matrix. Now, what will happen let us see. So, this is going to be in the case of left inverse. Now, let us see what will happen if I take on the right hand side. Suppose now I take A and I put it on the right hand side A transpose A inverse A transpose. Then if you remember then this is equal to P. So, that is the projection matrix on the column spores of A that we have already know. So, in this case I will get my P the projection matrix and that which is the projection matrix on the column space of the matrix A this one. Now, somehow suppose from here let us see what is going to happen. If now I take if A is n cross n and invertible, if A is n cross n and invertible then I can write from here it will become A, A inverse, A transpose inverse and A transpose and if you see from here then it becomes I into I and that is I. So, in this case it will be also becoming the the right inverse. So, so that is the condition for the projection matrix that if the matrix is a invertible matrix then this will going to be the identity matrix. So, this is my left inverse we have defined. Now, I will take the second case. So, I have taken the case 1, now I am taking the case 2. So, A is M cross N and in this case now suppose, so I have the A x is equal to B, this is my system and I am taking let the rank of the matrix A is M. So, suppose we have a uh, M is less than N the number of equation is the number of variables. So, in that case suppose I have a rank is equal to m. So, from here I can say that the matrix A has full row rank. So, in this case what is we are going to define is now let I have the system. So, now I define a matrix that is a A transpose and then I am taking its inverse and then this one. So, let us see what is going to happen in this case. So, I define the term this one and I call it a right inverse and I represent by A inverse right. So, in this case let us see. So, why it is right? If I take A and I multiply by this inverse then this will be equal to A A transpose and A A transpose inverse and that is equal to Y. So, from here 
I can say that this is in the right inverse of the matrix A and from here then I can write like this one. Also if I try to put it on the left side, so let us see what is going to happen. Now also if I take A transform A A transpose inverse and putting on the left hand side because it is the right inverse then if you see then this is also a P it is a projection matrix on the row space of A because instead of A transpose you just put A and then you will get the same value as the previous one this one. So that was the on the column space so I now I take just on the A transpose so I get this value and that is the projection matrix on the row space and the same way if you take this matrix is invertible and then this become is going to be the identity matrix. So in this case we are able to write the left inverse and the right inverse. So now we are we can define the terminology. So this now we define the terminology A with this sign the plus sign. So this is we call it pseudo inverse or we also call more Penrose inverse because this is given by the mathematician more Penrose. So now from here I can call that this left hand inverse also can be written as a dragon. So this is like a and this is also can be written as so it is a plus sign like a cross so this is the pseudo inverse so now from here we are able to write the pseudo inverse that is the we call it right hand inverse and the left hand inverse now we are going to take the next case so let's take the third case now we have the matrix a that is m cross n and and suppose a is rank deficient so rank deficient means it is not a full rank so let the rank of matrix a is k and that is less than whatever the minimum value I am taking this because if it is a number of row is more than number of variable then it can be n minimum value can be n otherwise minimum value can be m. So the rank of the matrix is even less than this one. So in that case so now from here now if this is the case then then the matrix a transpose A and A A transpose are not invertible. This thing also we have seen. So if it is not invertible then if you see from here then I, I cannot define the left inverse and the right inverse. So in this case how we are going to define. So now from here I will take the help of SVD. So we will define the pseudo inverse with the help of SVD singular value decomposition. So in this case what we are going to do is now I, I have matrix A so this is my matrix A that is m cross n. So I know that I can write its singular value decomposition. So I will take u 
sigma v transpose. So, these things we already know where this u is a square matrix of order m cross n having the So, here it is a orthogonal matrix now summation sigma is, is the diagonal matrix with singular values lambda sigma 1 sigma 2 up to sigma k and then 0 0 0 and this is. So, this is of order m cross n and this is again the n cross n matrix taking its transpose. So, this is a v transpose. So, this is also orthogonal matrix and we know that in this case we can find out the orthogonal matrix. So, u and v we know that we can find u and v as. So, u and v can be found as so a transpose a I can write some maybe I can write v that is equal to so v i sigma i v i or that is also if you remember this is also lambda i square v i. So, now from here because I know that the sigma i is equal to lambda i root. So, maybe I just write this one lambda i this value. Now, from here so it means that this a transpose a is orthogonally diagonalizable. So, I, from here I can find the value of v. So, this is the v I can find. Similarly, we can define u. So, u we can define from a a transpose and then putting this u i is and that is also equal to whatever the values we are taking. So, maybe I can write them mu i u i. So, this is also we can define the diagonalized form of the matrix A A transpose because this is going to be the m cross m matrix and this is going to the n cross n matrix and this is smitting matrix. So, we know that it is always diagonalizable. So, we can write this form and then we can substitute here and we get this value. Now, let us see. So, what is going to happen now? Let us I define a pseudo inverse. So, this one I will define. So, it is u v transpose pseudo inverse. Now, I can define this as v transpose summation and u diagonal. Now, v is al already orthogonal matrix. So, this inverse the pseudo inverse is basically it will be same as the transpose. So, I can I will get the value v here and then this is sigma inverse and u. So, it is a pseudo inverse. So, it becomes the transpose because u is orthogonal matrix. So, from here I will get this form. Now, let us see that what is going to happen here. Now, we know that the sigma is basically a diagonal matrix with singular values lambda sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma k and then 0, 0, 0, 0. So, if I take the sigma inverse, the pseudo inverse, so this will be equal to 
वन ओवर सिग्मा वन वन ओवर सिग्मा टू वन ओवर सिग्मा के एंड देन जीरो 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 सो दिस विल बी द सिग्मा इनवर्स नाउ लेट सी आई डिफाइन ए ए इनवर्स सोडो इनवर्स सो दिस इज माय ए इज यू सिग्मा वी ट्रांसपोज and this is i can write v sigma u transpose from here i can write this as a u sigma now in this case this and this will be identity matrix because it is a orthogonal matrix so i can write from here then this will be equal to u transpose and if you see from here then i am multiplying this by this matrix so it will be a u and then i will get here i will get the identity matrix of order k and then this 0 0 u transpose so if i put the the pseudo inverse on the right hand side i'll get this value a a pseudo inverse so i am not going to get the value i here because we have this matrix and if there is this matrix has a full rank and then it is complete i then it will be i and then u u transpose will be i otherwise this will be on this form similarly similarly what we are going to define is now i take a inverse a so in this case i will get v summation and u transpose and putting the value here a so a is u sigma v transpose and from here you will get v sigma now in this case also this is identity matrix because it is a orthogonal form and from here this will be equal to sigma v transpose so in this case also we are getting v then ik and then v transpose so that is how we are going to get when we take on the left hand side of a so this is the way we can define the the pseudo inverse for any type of matrix if it is a diagonalizable then i can define its left inverse and the right inverse and means if the matrix is a full rank then we can define the left inverse and the right inverse and if the matrix has the rank deficient form so in that case we can use the help of we can use this uh, svd to find out the pseudo inverse another important things we just want to discuss here is that now how this because we know that if i have a matrix a m cross n then this is a transformation and we all also know that these are the four subspaces and this is orthogonal to each other so i know that this is a row space of a this is a column space of a this is a null space of a and this is the null space of a transpose now from here if you see that if a is n cross n and invertible then i know that a x is equal to b and from here my x will be a inverse b 
So in that case, I have a unique solution. Also, now I take suppose I take Ax is equal to 0 and from here you know, know that this will be A inverse 0 and that gives you that x is only 0 element because it will be 0. So, x will be 0 element only here. So, now if the matrix A, so now this is my transformation A. So, in this case if the matrix is invertible then I can say that the null space of A has only 0 element. Similarly, I can take the A transpose and then we can define some y is equal to b. So, in that case also you will see that if A is invertible then A transpose also going to have the uh, rank full rank and in that case it is going also going to give the unique solution. So, from here you can see that the same way I can define that the null space of A transpose is also 0 element. So, whenever we are going to have a inverse of the matrix A, then in that form always the null space of N A and the null space of A transpose is 0 when this inverse exists. So, this is the A we are going to take and my A inverse is going back from here to here. So, that is my A inverse. So, suppose this is my some let us take this my x. So, this will be A x and this is going to give back a x. So, this is my A x if I take this x and this is going to give you the x the back. So, that is the meaning of inverse in this case. Now, now the similarly, so left inverse basically this is the left inverse. So, left inverse what is it is doing? It is killing the null space on the left hand side and right inverse killing the null space on the right hand side. So, similarly we can define that we have a system A that is m cross n x is equal to b. So, in this case if we define A transpose A inverse A transpose. So, this is my left inverse. So, I know that the dimension of A transpose A is n cross n because we have taken that it is it has the full rank the rank of A we have defined is equal to n the number of variables. So, in this case also if you see the number of variables are n. So, it means I can say that the num, null space of A will contain only 0 element because this matrix has a rank that is n. So, you can see that this is whole of the dimension n then at its dimension will be 0 by the rank nullity theorem. So, in that it means that the null space of A is 0. So, it means that the left inverse pseudo inverse is killing the null space on the left hand side. And similarly, A, A transpose inverse on the right hand side. In this case you can say that the null space of A transpose is 0 and it means that the right. So, that is I can write as A inverse right hand side. So, it will kill the null space on the right hand side. So, that is my right hand side. So, that is the meaning of the inverse. So, finding the inverse means it kills the null space related to that uh, vector space from where it is defined. So, this is just the, the way we can define. So, now, so let us 
take one example that how we can define the, the pseudo inverse for the corresponding uh, given matrix. So, let us take one example. Suppose I have a matrix A that is a column matrix. So, let us take one uh, very simple matrix. I just take the column matrix 1, 2. So, this is my matrix of dimension 2 cross 1. And I know that the rank in this case is 1. So, it is full rank, full rank matrix. So, now I want to define its pseudo inverse. So, it means that it is a full rank. So, I want to define its pseudo inverse. So, find its pseudo inverse. So, pseudo inverse means I need to define this value and in this case this value will be equal to because we know that it is the full rank matrix. So, I can define my A transpose A inverse A transpose. So, this is basically I am going to define here left inverse. So, let us see. Now, I define my A transpose A. So, A transpose A will be 1, 2 and this is 1, 2 and from here you will see that it is 5 because it is 1 cross 2, it is 2 cross 1. So, it is 1 cross 1. So, I will get the matrix 1 by 1 matrix with the element 5 and A transpose A inverse because in this case I know that this is invertible. So, it will be 1 over 5. So, that is my inverse in this case. Now, I can define my pseudo inverse. So, that will be 1 by 5 and A transpose. So, this is 1, 2. So, that is my left inverse because you can check from here then if I write like this one then it will be 1 by 5, 1, 2 and A is 1, 2. So, it is 5 or 5 that is 1. So, my A inverse A will be I that is 1. So, basically it is identity matrix of dimension 1 cross 1. So, that is the way we can define my pseudo inverse for the matrix of this form. So, let us take another example. Second example I can take. I just take the matrix A. Now, I just take this matrix row matrix 2 cross. So, it is 1 cross 2 matrix. Now, I can say that it has a rank of A is 1 that is the number of rows. So, it has a full row, uh, full row rank. So, has full row rank. So, now I can define its pseudo inverse that will be A A transpose inverse because I am putting on the right side. So, that is my A transpose and this is I know that this is A inverse right. Now, let us see what is going to happen in this case. Now, I define A A transpose. So, my A is 2 2 and this A transpose will be 2 2. So, it is 1 cross 2 and it is 2 cross 1. So, it will be 4 and 4 8. So, I will get the matrix that is 1 cross 1 matrix and A A transpose inverse will be 1 by 8. And now from here I can define my A transpose A A transpose inverse. So, it is 1 by 8 and A transpose is 2 2. So, I can take that this I just I multiply here. So, it will be 1 by 4 and 1 by 4.
So, it is 1 by 4 and 1 by 4. So, that is my pseudo inverse in this case and I can check this one that my A. So, this is 1 by 4, 1 by 4 and then my A is 2, 2. So, it is 2 cross 1, it is 1 cross 2. So, it will be 2 cross 2 matrix. Now, multiply here. So, it is 1 by 2. This is also multiply here. So, it is 1 by 2. It is a right inverse, not on the left side. So, I have to write A, A inverse. So, my A is 2, 2 and this is 1 by 4 and 1 by 4. So, it is 1 cross 2 and this is 2 cross 1. So, from here this will be equal to, so 1 by 4, so it is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 and that is 1. So, my right inverse is when I apply on the A, I get the value I, this is my identity matrix of dimension 1 cross 1. So, from here it, we are able to verify that this is the right inverse. Now, I take the case 3. I take the matrix A, let us take it may be 2 cross 2 matrix. I just take 1, 1, 2, 2. So, in this case you know that the rank of the matrix A is 1. So, it is a rank defi deficient matrix. And from here, I know that A transpose A and A A transpose are singular. So, I cannot define the left inverse and the right inverse. Then I have to take the help of SVD theorem. So, since this is singular matrices, then we cannot define A inverse left and A inverse right are not possible in this case. So, I have to take the help of SVD. So, we need to apply SVD form. So, let us take this one. So, I just want to write the SVD form. So, I will take A transpose A in this case. So, A transpose is 1, 1, 2, 2 and this is 1, 1, 2, 2. Now, I take this. So, 1 and 4, 5, then it will also 5, because this is also going to this, this is also going to this 5 and this is 5. And I know the rank of this matrix A transpose A is always same as the rank of A. So, from here I can say that its rank is 1. Now, so A transpose A the rank is 1. So, it, it means that this is a singular matrix. So, it is going to have one eigenvalue 0. So, now from here I can find out, I can say that the eigen values of A transpose A So, this is 10 and 0 because I can write directly because the sum of eigenvalues should be the equal to the trace of the matrix. So, trace is 10. So, I can take this value 10 and 0. Now, from here I can find out the eigenvector corresponding to. So, lambda is 10 basically. <coughs> now, from here I can define A transpose A minus 10 I 
and that I can take as V1 equal to 0. So, this is matrix becomes minus 5, 5, 5, minus 5 and I can take this as maybe I can take x, y and 0, 0. So, from here I can write this is a minus 5 plus this. So, x is equal to y and from here I can take my first eigen vector 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 because I need to find its magnitude 1. The v 1 should be of magnitude 1. So, I am dividing by 1 by root 2 dividing by root 2. So, it is 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2. So, that is my first Eigen vector we have taken. Now, second Eigen vector is corresponding to the 0 Eigen value. So, it is it should be equal to A transpose A V 2 is equal to 0 and from here you will see that this is 5, 5, 5, 5 and suppose x y equal to 0, 0 and that gives me x is equal to minus y. So, if I take x is equal to minus y, I can choose my v 2 is maybe I can take minus 1 by root 2 and this is 1 by root 2 because from here now I can define my matrix v is 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, minus 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 and you can check that V is an orthogonal matrix. So, we are able to find this orthogonal matrix. Now, from here I need to find the U. So, to find u this one we need to find. So, in this case it is also of two dimension. So, I will define with so first we have a non zero uh, singular value. So, I will define for sigma 1 is root 10 that is my singular value. So, this is my singular value. So, in this case I will take a u 1 should be equal to sigma 1 not u it is v 1 u 1. I already know that how we can find u 1. So, from here this value is so I can find my u 1 as 1 over sigma 1 a v 1. So, that is equal to 1 over root 10 and A is 1, 1, 2, 2 and V 1 is 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 and from here I can find. So, it will be 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2, 2 by root 2 and from here it is 2 plus 2, 4 by root 2 this value I can take and from here you can just write this form as I can call this I am taking so it is 20. So, I can write this value as 1 over root 5 and 2 over root 5. So, this will come like this one because I just multiply by root 2 and root 2. So, then it will be root 2 by 10. So, it is 1 by 5 and it is 2 by 5. So, this one I able to find u 1 because u 1 is also a unit vector. Now, I can define my u 2. So, now I cannot define these things because my another value is 0. So, then what we have need to do is that now u 2 is I can define from. So, if you see from here 
this u is generally of order n cross m. So, suppose we have a, a n cross m, then a transpose a is always n cross n and a a transpose is always m cross n. And my a is from R n to R n. So, now from here you can see that my u 2 will belongs to null space of A transpose because my u 2 will be perpendicular to the subspace of column space of A because here it will be the column space and that is of dimension m cross m. So, this is basically m cross m. So, in that case the rank is 1 only here and it is of 2 dimension r 2 in this case. So, 1 is lying in the column space that is u 1. So, another will lying in the perpendicular to this one because we need the orthogonal matrix. So, that will be def definitely belongs to the null space of A transpose. So, I can write that u 2 belongs to the null space of A transpose. So, from here I can write that A transpose is my A is 1 1 2 2. So, it will be 1 1 2 2 x y and that equal to 0 0 and from here I will get x plus 2 y is equal to 0 and that gives me that my x is equal to minus 2 y. So, from here I can take my vector as suppose I take uh, y is equal to 1 so maybe I will just take x is equal to 1 or maybe y is equal to 1 and x will be minus 2 and now I normalize it. So, if I normalize this will become so 2 raised to power 2 4 plus 1 5. So, it will be minus 2 by root 5 and 1 by root 5. So, this is I can define root 5. So, this is my u 2 and you can check that this is uh, orthogonal to u 1. Another, another way is that we can define otherwise we can define a vector some vector I can define some vector may be uh, p that is linearly independent to u 1 and then apply Gram Smith. So, then I apply the gram thing process to, to find u 2 that is also one other way. So, now from here we are able to get the values. So, my u is now, so it is 1 by root 5, 2 by root 5 and this is minus 2 by and 1 by root 5. So, 1 by root 5, 2 by root 5 and if you take the dot product. So, this is going to be the 0 value and from here you can see that. So, which implies that my matrix A is now u. So, this is one by root five and this summation it will be root 10 0 0 0 because 0 is the another uh, Eigen value of A transpose A and here I will take V transpose. So, my V value is basically 1 by root 2. So, I will take the transpose of this. So, the minus will come here. So, it is equal to 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2 
and 1 over root 2 and if you do this one you will get the value so that you can verify yourself. Now from here I want to define my pseudo inverse. So pseudo inverse in this case will be because my A is U summation V transpose. So this one I want to define so this will be equal to V U transpose. So in this case my this will be equal to so now I need to find the V. So this will be equal to 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 and this is the inverse of this. So it will be 1 by root 10 0 0 0 and u transpose. So this is my u minus 2 by root 5, 2 by root 5 and 1 by root 5. So that is the value we are going to get and if you uh, solve this one, so maybe I can uh, do the calculation for this. So if you do the calculation, I will get the value 1 by 10 and this is 1, 2, 1, 2. So that is the pseudo inverse we are going to get in this case. So my pseudo inverse is 1, 2, 1, 2 and now you can check from here that A, A pseudo inverse. So my A is in this case is 1, 1, 2, 2. 1 by 10 it is 1 2 1 2. So in this uh, if I take the calculation so I will get the value this is 1 and 1 2 this is 4 <coughs> it is 4 and this is 4 plus 4 8. So I will get the value here 2 by 10 point 0.2, point 0.4, point 0.4, point 0.8 and if you take A pseudo inverse A, so this is 1 by 10, one, one, two, two. so this is 1 by 10 and this is I am taking it, it will be 5 here and then it is 5 here, 5. So this is equal to <coughs> 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So that is my pseudo inverse and you can also verify this with the help of now. So after getting this value you can see that we are unable to find here the identity matrix that we already know that we are not going to get the identity matrix. And these things we can also verify by the taking this form. So A pseudo inverse, if you see from here, A uh, this one. So A pseudo inverse Yeah, A pseudo inverse is this form V i k V t. So it is equal to V summation V t. So V is basically we already know. So my V is 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2. So I can just take from here also. So 1 by root 2 and minus 1 by root 2, this is 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2 and this is 1 by root 10, 0, 0, 0 and V transpose is just this 
and if you do the calculation here, so you will see from here I will get this value. So, let us calculate this first. So, I will get this, so I will get 1 by root 20, 1 by root 20 and then, so this is going to be this, this is going to be this, now this is 0, 0. So, I will get this value into 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2. And if you do the calculation here, so 1 by root 2 is here. Now, from here I will get 1 by root 40 and this is 1 by root 40 this is the value now this should be i basically if you see from here this is i so it should be 1 so now from here if i do this one it should be 1 by root 2 and this should be 1 by root 2. And now from here I can check. So, 1 by root 2 and 1 by root 2, 1 by 2. Now, this is also 1 by 2, this is also 1 by 2 and this is 1 by 2 and that is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this is also we are getting this way. So, this is either we can verify from here and we can verify from here also. So, and this is not, it is basically i k 0 0 0 because I have taken this form this way. Similarly, we can define from the other way and we can verify. So, this is the way we can take the pseudo inverse for any type of matrix. It is either as a full rank or in the matrix or square matrix with a lower uh, which has the row deficiency. So, this way we can define the pseudo inverse of the given matrix. So, we will stop here. So, in the today's lecture we have discussed about that pseudo inverse of a given matrix. So, and we have shown that if the matrix is a rectangular matrix and if it has the full rank, then we can define its left inverse and the right inverse. And if the matrix is having the rank deficiency, then we can take the help of SVD to find out the pseudo inverse of the given matrix. And this uh, pseudo inverse are also known as a more Penrose uh, inverse or the pseudo inverse. So, I hope that you have enjoyed this lecture. Uh, thanks for watching.